At the Building and Facilities Construction Committee meeting of Wednesday, March 15th, 2023, um, we'll come to order at four, I think a little bit more. It's like all three. 403, thank you. Okay, um, when we'll just go around and give your name so the recorder knows who's here. Linda Brown. Ray Fox. Bob Warby. Fred Fontaine. Matt Brown. Matthew Ogier. And Shirley Masinski. Thank you, everybody. Um, first item is the Board of Selectmen assignment and what's moving on. And uh, Matt, if you would, either one of you would like to address that. And where are we? <laughs> so the board unanimously supported Weston and Sampson for the designer of record for the town for the next three years. Uh, at least to offer that to them. Mm -hmm. And let down letters were sent to the other two finalists and an award letter was sent to Weston and Sampson. We are awaiting a time certain to execute the contract and get them started. So that's where we stand with that. We will be negotiating their fee as part of that discussion as well. Mm -hmm. Any questions, anybody? Okay. The um, second thing is the administration report on projects in process. And I think we're at the point where oil spill, you, you were waiting for a letter from the insurance company. Closure letter from the cleanup. Cleanup, yeah. So, okay. Which, you know what? I will ask again. We haven't heard anything, right? No. No news is good news, and we haven't heard a thing. Okay. Any questions, anybody? All right, green communities is the second uh, item B. And Matt, you sent out a uh, informational thing to us, and you're still waiting. Any? Yeah, uh, not much of an update. We. Our new uh, project expediter reviewed all our facilities and is providing us with estimates. It's supposed to have three of the school estimates ready for us at some point this week that we'll be reviewing uh, together on Monday. Uh -huh. So until I see those estimates, the only one we've got so far was a fire department project that I'm not so sure we could be interested in pursuing. Um, but just too early to tell right now. And one of the things we asked about last meeting was when is the application due? And, mm -hmm. um, the application hasn't even been announced yet, so there's no window or deadline at this time. So we're a little ahead of it, which is good. Yes. But um, there's no updates at this time. The school projects are lighting projects, right? Yes. So lighting projects are winners. They yes. usually do well. Yes. I did ask Matt, as I saw him when I was coming in, uh, Matt Wojcik regarding electric cars because I thought at one point when we first started all this green communities and stuff, one of the kind of things that they wanted was, okay, if we have to buy vehicles, we need to look at electric cars. Are they still pushing that or? So the, it's kind of a two-parter because the DOER has two programs for this. You can either do you pursue these under your green communities, or you can pursue them through the electric vehicle incentive program. If you do it through the green community grant, they're only going to give you as much money as you would get in the heat of the uh, electric vehicle incentive program. So they almost prefer that you try to pursue it through that grant instead. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I actually uh, tried, to, uh, or at least started this dialogue back in Auburn um, about trying to get electric vehicles, and they kind of guided me away from applying for those as a green community. Okay, same here. So our new vehicle purchases are not replacements okay. to this point. I've not been replacements. So the building commissioner is a primary example. He was using his private vehicle and then charging us the IRS mm -hmm. reimbursement rate for his mileage when he would go around town. There are some you know, pretty significant downsides to having a an official who's that busy driving their personal vehicle many miles a week. And we were able to obtain 
the little white Ford Ranger out there that you see, uh, new, on a, a national contract. So it was $33,000. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, we did not get any incentive when we inquired with green communities because you're not replacing an inefficient town vehicle with an energy efficient one. You're just buying a new vehicle. There, there's some real holes in the policy making here that it doesn't make any sense at all. You should just be incentivized to buy mm -hmm. what they want us to buy. Because mm -hmm. um, we have the chargers and we, the sense of urgency to, to address the charger issue would, would be there if the town vehicles were using them. Uh, <clears throat> by way of update as well, there's really only one all electric vehicle that has been rated for pursuit uh, police purposes. That's the Ford Mustang, which is actually the fastest car on the road. Uh, so the Ma Michigan State Police, who are sort of gathered this niche unto themselves to certify cars as pursuit rated or not, have, have pursuit rated the Ford Mustang. Uh, but the jury is very much out. It's, so it doesn't look like the old Mustang at all. It looks like a Tesla. It's got the Mustang logo on it and stuff, but it, it's more of an SUV, a small SUV. It's not a, it's not a muscle car anymore. So <clears throat> there are a couple of police chiefs that have opted. So uh -huh. the, the chief in Westboro, who used to be the chief in Uxbridge, uh, Uxbridge up until a couple of years ago, he has a Mustang and he swears by it. We're going to go slower, so our next cruiser purchase, we will have one hybrid and one all gas. And we'll slowly change our fleet over. Um, the jury is out. So about 50% of the people we ask hate the hybrids for police use, and the other 50% say they're great. Much has to do probably with your environment, mm -hmm. whether or not you're able to go anywhere on battery power as opposed to <clears throat> just idling and using it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will see. We will test it ourselves and see sure. how our group thinks about it. But that's where we are with electric vehicles. I wanted to make that switch, and that's why we pursued the EVIP program and got the chargers installed here. For some reason, they don't seem to work ever. Now, yeah. we've switched them out a couple of times, and we've had plenty of warranty-based service. I'd like to say I was patient, but I haven't been very patient. Like, after the third or fourth time, I was like, will you please just get your junk out of here? Like, just, it's garbage. It doesn't work, and you keep telling me all these nice little pre-canned speeches about what you know, how great we are that we have them, but they don't work. So nobody's able to use them. Once people <coughs> use them, try to use them, and they're unsuccessful, they won't come back. It's a customer relationship type of thing. So I'm concerned. One of the things I think we need to do, though, at this point, is make sure it's not our building that's causing the problem. So we are aware of one thing with the electricity in this building is that it's these older buildings, and we still have the original breakers. Uh, the voltage can swing pretty wildly with these older appliances. And modern equipment does not allow for that much fluctuation in voltage. So we may be, I don't know if shorting it out is the right word, but we're, we're the equipment is shutting down because it doesn't have clean power. and. There may be a solution to that. If, if it's a problem is inside the building, then we can install an appliance that will clean the power before it sends it the rest of the way over to the chargers. I would, I, I would rather bear that expense than have them mm -hmm. rip and replace what we have and only to find out that they, they don't work a third time. So that's where I am with that. So one question, Matt. If people come up to the chargers and they don't work, People need to know, what am I supposed to do? Who do I contact? Yeah, there is somebody by us. They answer the phone out there, but we did have a tough yeah. situation one night where somebody ran out of electricity, yeah. got towed here, attempted to charge, and was unsuccessful. Yeah. And you know, I mean, at this point, we can post signage. 
I don't know. Every time I open up the thing, I see that somebody has successfully charged and other people have not, so I'm not huh. entirely sure what's going on there. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen anybody attempt to use it. Well, I think <coughs> the word gets out that, hey, they don't, they're not working, and so, and people, if they need a charge. Correct. I mean, I have had an experience where a family member uh, needed to get charged and attempted to both units and it wouldn't work. So, but I then I'm like, when I got told this, I said, well, who did you tell? Mm. Who needs to know? Oh, so if in the more general sense, not, not that I'm standing in front of the charger, but right. in the more general sense, they could tell. Okay. That, that word Adam, needs to Adam. get out there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any if other? I had my druthers, we would have quite a few charging stations in town, and they would all be owned by the town. Because we can supply electricity to our taxpayers at much lower rates mm -hmm. than you would be able to get on your own. Even with the energy aggregation program, we buy energy for less. Mm -hmm. So I would like to pass that, but it's the taxpayers that make that policy possible, mm -hmm. so I'd like to give it back. <clears throat> but until I can get two to work, Mm -hmm. I'm not real excited about buying six of them. <laughs> right? <laughs> that would be proof of concept, right? Anybody questions, comments, uh, suggestions? I find that it, logistically, Brad? how do you see that working? Like, where else would you have chargers? Uh, at one of our facilities on Main, uh, across from Family Convenience. Uh, whether or not we, how long we'd stay in that business once the commercial marketplace jumps on board, but right now I haven't seen any serious proposal here in Douglas where an existing energy charging station, <laughs> gas station slash diesel has seriously said that that's what they want to do on their property. So until they do it, we, we have the opportunity to do it. Interesting. Uh, I'd be especially interested in doing it if we had a solar field or something else that was generating our own power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have these wild ideas about solar fields, charging batteries to charge people's cars. Yeah. Not costing them. Okay. Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> They're just ideas right now. Right. We would need a. Oh no! He missed the cue again. <laughs> we would need a municipal power and light. Yes. <laughs> So, you know, uh, a wax poetic about that, but I am trying to move things along. Madam Chair, if you yep. would indulge me, I can probably knock out C, E, and F all with the same comment. Okay. Which is... Still uh, waiting for the generators? Those, those are all McRitchie projects, and I have been like a hound on Mr. Gerber. And he has said he's wrapping up a very big project and will get back to me this week. Okay. That is his latest update. Dear I'm going to say that to me, this week ends at Close Business Friday. Mm -hmm. It is not a seven week period. <laughs> right? His definitions keep sliding. Now, I need to hear from Howard soon about, yeah. about this. Okay. <clears throat> I'm less concerned about the two generator projects because we know that we have we have put the order in and we're waiting for satisfaction. Uh, the HVAC is what's concerning me most. Okay. So that leaves your roof. We have to add one thing back, and I I take the blame for not catching it. Jen is great. Um, in community development. Uh, she runs the agenda by me before she puts it out and I missed the municipal fire alarm which is still on hold until we get the roof done. Yep. So we need to put that and I will let or my Matt you can or I will let her know. Because that shouldn't uh, because I, I believe there's still money that's already been appropriated for that. I don't know exactly how much, but there is. All right. Um, anything else that? Um, so the main roof replacement is the last remaining item on this list. Okay. 
and we are still in progress with that. So you have It's only been three weeks since your last meeting, so there's not a lot of extra to add here with the decision to go with Weston and Sampson, and they will be our quote unquote house doctor. Yep. We do their <laughs> clog dancing. Uh, <laughs> They, they will be in a relationship with us where we may task them with helping us design. There's, a, there's an issue with the way the, the existing roof was yep. was blended in with some of the trim work up there and the copper. Yep, you, I think you brought So I went through that last yep. time. Mm -hmm. So you will notice in these big storms that we've had, water isn't actually pooling up there, it's, it's actually running off the way it's supposed to. But then it comes down and it's sitting on the ledge and coming to specific spots on the edge and then dripping down. And one of those spots is right here next to the uh, security card reader at the door. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a spot there. And you can actually look at above and see some of the, the mortar has loosened and some of the bricks right above the doorway. Mm -hmm. This has been going on for a long time, right. probably since this roof was installed. So. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> One of the other things that building official has brought to my attention is he's thinking there's a good chance that nothing was ever taken off the roof. When the new roof, when the new membrane was put on, the old tar and gravel roof may be fully intact below it. So we may have some weight issues oh, yeah. before we proceed. So yeah, so now that we have an architect slash engineer on, on the payroll as a contractor, we may engage them uh, as a warm-up exercise <laughs> to help okay. us finish the spec. The rest of the spec is easy. It was it's trying to figure out latent conditions mm -hmm. as best we can without having to discover them later. Okay. So really, we're still going to leave the um, municipal main roof replacement um, the HVAC for the fire station. Okay. And the fire station upgrade. So I, I got rid of those all at the same time. C, E, and F are all the same. Okay. But they're not completed, so. He's waiting for me, Roger. Right. So we need to leave them on. Oh, yes. All right. Yep. That's my point. Okay. All right. So the, I have a question. Yep. So the generator for this building. When do you expect that to come in? Isn't it November? The, the ETA, well, but then the supply chain changes, right? I think we still hold out hope that this construction season, we will do this generator project here. Okay. And that will be up in operational for the next big storm season oh. next fall. Okay. Right. And then um, once we get the architect on board, there'll probably be maybe some things added. So I think the proper place for them to have their kickoff meeting is this commission, mm -hmm. right? Okay. With the department head, with Matt. Yeah. Uh, department head in this case being John Furno. Mm -hmm. That you'll start getting regular updates on the progress being made on the, the highway department building. Okay. Anybody, any thoughts, any questions? You're good with that? Yep. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, if there's nothing else, we do have minutes that we received, um, but I have not, I didn't get them via email, so I have not read them. Uh, I think maybe we hold. I don't know if any of you got your minutes ahead of time. So I think maybe we'll hold them and, and uh, take them up at the next meeting. And let's see, any, oh, anything on opera funding and? So the select board has voted Sorry. Yeah. to encumber almost all of the remaining balance of our opera funds in pursuit of a single project, which is the replacement of the water main on Depot Street. And then through some convoluted easement that goes back to the day of the dinosaurs, <laughs> get it back to Maple Street and then close up the loop, so complete the loop uh, at the end of Maple, I believe it's Monroe, where it comes down. 
that way. But that is a dead end service. So we have two dead end services, dead, dead end service lines, and we want to, when Connect. we replace this one, we want to also loop it with new line to make a, a complete loop. Is that Martin Road? Martin Road, sorry, Martin. Not Maple. Yeah. Oh, not Maple. Maple. Maple's, Maple's a further. Maple's Road. the, yes. the other yeah. way. Uh, yeah. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't be crossing the old railroad tracks to get to Maple? Well, yeah. Oh, so it will be maybe a little part, portion of Maple, to then to Martin. Yeah, Maple's definitely an, implicated in the project, but okay. the, the dead end is on Martin. Yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah. there's, there's some there's complexity on, here. Uh, Go ahead, Bob. Road and, and Maple is a hydrant. That's probably the end of it right That's there. The end. Right. Okay. And then it probably ends somewhere here on Depot, I guess. I don't know how far it goes. So I think it goes all the way to maybe almost to the last house. So it wasn't that long ago, before I was working here, but it was maybe 15 years ago or so. You could drive all the way through. And the, it was actually crossing an individual's property. And he put up some barricades, not really to prevent the town, <clears throat> but to prevent joyriders on quads and other things from ripping through his yard. Um, <clears throat> but now we've done some research into the legality of, it's a, it's a right to pass and repass. The, we don't have a right to, to bury a pipe. Mm. So there may be some negotiation with the landowner. Mm -hmm. To extinguish one in favor of the other, which would probably be a good deal for the landowner. Mm -hmm. um, it would certainly survive them, because these pipes can last a long time. Uh, but this would address a long-standing issue, two long-standing issues, actually, we're up to three. <laughs> one is, this is a very old pipe on Depot Street, so it's over 100 years old. And it's time, time to replace it. The second issue is that we currently have, in, a non-compliant service into this building, mm -hmm. so we have both domestic water and fire suppression water coming off the same source, which is not acceptable. And the last thing that has happened is there is a, I believe that's a grist mill. Mm -hmm. Yes. So at the old grist mill, there's actually water runs under the, under the road, under an old culvert, it's a dry stack, and that has failed from stormwater runoff. Okay. Uh, <coughs> But it makes sense for us now. I've been putting off fixing that because I didn't want to start pulling a bridge apart, re redo the pipe, and then come back in 10 years and tear the pipe up again. It's kind of in in mm -hmm. inefficient. Mm -hmm. So the, the staging that we're think talking about now is using Chapter 90 funds to address the bridge, build a nice strong structure, or rebuild. We're actually going to restack the existing material and then secure it better, you know, using modern standards. And, and then at that point, do the entire water line up that street mm -hmm. so that we're only tearing up the roadway once. It's a little bit of a, yeah. it'll, it'll inconvenience people on Depot Street, so we want to think about it really carefully and get all the work lined up uh, by the same engineer so that they're, they're marching the project along and not, we don't have two separate projects competing for Space and time. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Question. Yes. Um, how about the old railroad bed? You'd need an. Probably need an act of Congress, the United Rail. Nations, <laughs> and the International Court of Justice yeah, to get across right. that rail bed. Uh, not the least of which is that there's an infinite right to rebuild the railway bed in any successor and interest to the <laughs> ancient railway. Yeah. So. So but we're hoping how to are you going to get under? well under it so that it's not really changing. Okay. We rebuilt the, the surface of it. But, but you'll still need approval for all of those things I just said. Whoever owns it. <laughs> right. Interesting. Yeah. It will any, be. Yeah. Any other questions or anybody have any comments? No. All right. That works. Any other questions before we move on? If not, um, and the upcoming meetings, April 19th, 
and May 17th. So, and again, I ask you, if you cannot make the meeting, please let me know. And thank you for all those who do let me know. All right. Um, With respect to the minutes, Madam Chair, may I just make a quick note? Yeah, we're going to hold on those because we none I of I know, us, I just want yeah, to put on your sure. radar screen in case I miss the meeting or forget yeah. myself that I did join the meeting remotely at about 4.15. Okay. You did. Oh, it doesn't even mention you were here at I all. No, and I made such an effort to get there with my, yeah. my new crown and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so I want no, the minutes to say that, that was, I was that there. That was last month, though, that was yes. last month. This is, this is <laughs> January. Oh, I see. Huh. So you're right, you were on the Zoom call yeah. for last month. But then I was. So this was. I don't think I missed. Prior. Did I miss January? There's no way. Not sure. Well, Matt filled in for you. Well, that was the one when you gave me notes. I remember that now. You know what it is? I think that was the other dentist. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think it was the one that set up the crown. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So it wasn't. It's all a blur. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> so it, it wasn't the January All right, so for the February, so for the note takers benefit for the February meeting, I would like it mentioned. So. Sounds like you'd rather go to the dentist. And go <laughs> <laughs> you said it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> if no further comments, questions. That's a nice segue into a motion. <laughs> <laughs> Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Don't I move. Second. So Fred made the motion, and uh, Bob, you second it at 427. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>